Good evening. My name is Deepak Saini, and I'm very honored to be speaking with you all tonight. Let's talk about playing the long game. How many of you, how many of you know what I mean when I say that? Raise your hands. OK, that's fine. By one definition, playing the long game refers to active participation in achieving goals which may take some time. The short game is putting off anything that seems too hard for doing something that seems easy or fun. The short game offers visible and immediate benefits. The short game is seductive. The long game is the opposite of the short game. It means paying a small price today to make tomorrow's tomorrow easier. If we can do this long enough to see the results, it feeds on itself. Some examples of, uh, of what the long game is. Saving money or investing for tomorrow. Buying a house with a mortgage. The education system. And countless other examples. The long game is usually boring. It seems in this era of instant gratification, Instagram, Twitter, etc., we're becoming less and less inclined to play the long game. And I see people especially neglecting this in one particular aspect of their lives, more so than ever before. But before I get into that, let me tell you a little story about this guy I know. A guy that I've spoken to every day for the last 855 days. That's right, it's nearly two and a half years every day. So there was this boy, and he was always the chubby kid growing up. He can't even remember a time when he wasn't chubby. His parents immigrated to Canada in the early 1970s. It was the golden age of fast food, changing farming practices, advertising on TV, and what we now know to be flawed advice coming from the medical community. This boy's parents were introduced to drive through hamburger joints, pizza, westernized Chinese food, fried chicken in a bucket, not to mention a whole bunch more of convenience foods. His parents were also both involved in the hospitality business, so thus he ate a lot of restaurant food growing up. Celebrations, achievements, and rewards all centered around food, especially the almighty Sunday brunch. His parents both came from meager beginnings, and while he would be the first to applaud their work ethic, to make a life for their family in this new country, they instilled a mentality of scarcity in him. You better finish everything on your plate. You better get your money's worth at the buffet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Bottom line, this boy ate too much. But more importantly, he ate the wrong things. At the age of 13, this boy started playing organized football, thinking that would help him lose weight, gain confidence, maybe help with girls too. He was over 170 pounds at 13 years old. He had to starve himself for a week to get under the weight limit just so he could play. The weight limit was 170 pounds. He had to starve himself to get under the weight limit just so he could play football. He had to do the exact same thing the following year. At 15 years old, he entered high school, and there was this emphasis to get bigger and stronger to play football. He did get stronger, but he also got fatter not to mention the beginning of knee pain. After high school, he played one year of junior football before the knee pain and the realization that he probably wasn't making the pros uh, helped him decide to, to quit playing football. So in the six years that he ended up playing football, he went from having to make weight at 170 uh, pounds to 260 pounds. In the year that followed, he worked full-time in a restaurant, no surprise there, to earn money to go to university. He added another 10 pounds in that year to top out at 270 pounds. At 5'11", he was obese. Now in his second year of university, him and a bunch of friends really got into weight training. They followed all the bro science from the, from the muscle magazines and the, and the fitness magazines, and they started doing some combination of powerlifting and physique training. Now this guy got really, really strong over the next few years. He could lift incredible amounts of weights. But he was still fat. His diet, did, diet didn't get any better. To use his own words, he was still eating a ton of crap and he was eating excessive protein. He hovered around 250 pounds and remembers one summer trying a calorie restricted diet and was able to get down to 225 pounds. But he was tired all the time, had brain fog, and come the middle of the following semester, he had put it all back. Even though he was very strong during this period, he was probably his unhealthiest. The chronic bronchitis that plagued him as a kid intensified, 
and he would get sick three to four times a year and start to, and start to get joint pain everywhere, particularly in his knees, his back, and his shoulders. He eventually graduated university and got his first real job in the corporate world. So what did he do? He sat at a desk all day in front of a computer, drank the free pop and the free juice that the company provided, and not to mention the never-ending treats that were always somewhere in the office. He continued to weight train, uh, but at much lighter weights due to his injuries, and even started doing a little bit of cardio, and this got him down to a whopping 240 pounds. Shortly thereafter, he met a soulmate, and after a few years together, they decided to get married. They were going to have a destination wedding at a, at a beach resort. So him and his wife decided to make a big effort to look good for their wedding. So he ramped up the cardio, he restricted his calories, and he was able to get, to get down to about 210 pounds in, in about six months or so. He had shed some fat, but he mostly just lost all his muscle mass. Things were good for a while, but slowly over the next two years, his weight went back up to around 225 pounds, and he just kind of hovered up and down for the next three years. In 2011, this fellow decided that he would take up running as a way to lose weight and stroke his competitive fire that had been dormant from his football playing days. The weight uh, started to slowly come off, uh, but, he, but he found that he was getting sore joints again and he was starting to get sick again so, so often. In 2014, he completed his first half marathon with a pretty decent time. He made it his goal to crush that time in that same race the following year. He doubled down, he ramped up the distance training, he made some modifications to the diet, he was getting faster, but also sicker, and skinnier. He'd gotten his weight down to about 200 pounds. He was what you would call skinny fat. Lean arms, lean legs, but still this big tire around uh, the middle of his waist. He had lost a lot of that muscle mass that he had put on uh, earlier. The first significant change for him was trying to cope with always getting sick. Conventional Western medicine had no answers for him. In hindsight, neither he nor his doctor were asking the right questions. He decided to see a naturopathic doctor, did a bunch of tests, and found a whole bunch of nutritional deficiencies. They modified his supplemental regime, and he no longer gets nearly as sick or definitely not as severe as he used to. In March 2015, he was just killing himself training for that half marathon. And one Sunday after a long run with sore and inflamed knees, he bent over and he felt this sharp pain in his back. His big mistake was not resting adequately enough and try to train through the pain over the next couple weeks. So eventually he went off to his, uh, his conventional Western uh, doctor. The doctor poked and prodded him and just on the spot with no real tests or anything, diagnosed him with a bulging disc. Later to be found to be a wrong diagnosis. The doctor gave him some stretches and told him to come back in six weeks. So after five weeks with absolutely no improvement following the doctor's advice, he went to go see a physiotherapist. Not only was there, did he have a back problem, they found a problem with his hip. So his hips would rotate, which made his leg length uh, different, and that was also causing uh, part of his pain. So the physiotherapist totally modified his stretching routine and added a bunch of core work. After some slow improvement, the services of the chiropractor were also added to his health needs. He did this for eight months with only the smallest of improvement to his pain. So during this time, not only did he have to withdraw from that half marathon, he was forced to skip an entire golfing season. He couldn't run, couldn't, couldn't do any of those things. So he finally decided to pay for out of his own pocket and get an MRI done. The results were that he has degenerative disc disease in his L4, L5, L5, S1. So that's basically lower back. As great as the service was from his physiotherapist and chiropractor, he can't do anything further for degenerative disc disease. So he started doing his own research and then approached the, his naturopathic doctor about doing platelet-rich plasma, or PRP, treatments. The, low, the lower body is a very tricky, excuse me, the lower back is a very tricky part of the body. So he knew it might take three or four treatments to see any results. He did the first treatment in February 2016 and felt marginal improvement. So he booked the next appointment for six weeks later. All this time he was researching like crazy, trying to figure out how to heal his back. During the second procedure, he asked uh, the doctor if there would be any benefit to eating a low inflammatory diet, 
heading into the next procedure. He had, le he had learned through his own research that if your body's not fighting inflammation in your gut or in your joints or other places, it can focus on the spot where it needs to focus, namely the lower back in his case. The doctor answered like, yeah, that's a good course of action. Most patients never follow through with that advice. He, he said, people just won't change their lifestyle. So he said, what do I have to lose? I'm already in pain, I can't golf, I can't run, I can't play, I can't pick up my daughter, I can't play with my kids, I'm gonna try it. So for a week leading up to the third procedure and a week after the procedure, he ate clean. What does clean mean? But. So he saw some additional improvements to his back pain. He recovered faster from the procedure and felt less soreness in other parts of his body. This was a big aha moment for him. So he decided to eat clean for two weeks leading up to the fourth procedure and a month afterwards. He saw more improvements in his back pain. He recovered quickly again less soreness in other parts of his body. But this time he also noticed that he had lost weight. His clothes were feeling looser. The most important thing was that his back pain was improving. But he couldn't complain about the added benefit or added side effect of, of losing this fat weight. He kept up with, this, with eating low inflammatory for the following months. In a span of about seven months, he had lost 40 pounds of fat, trying to make his back feel better. He did not starve himself. He did not do some crazy fad diet. He did not do extra exercise. He ate healthy, low inflammatory foods that were right for his body. After those seven months, his body came to what he believes was an equilibrium point. He adopted those dietary changes as well as made other lifestyle changes for overall health. And he now sits plus or minus 160 pounds. Below the weight where we started this cautionary 40 pounds in seven months, and over 100 pounds from his heaviest weight. When you struggle with something for so long, whether it be weight, or other health issues, addiction, money issues, or a whole host of other things, we tend to look for the short term. If I only lost 10 pounds, if I only got that promotion, if I only had a new car, if I only dated that person, the list goes on and on. Through media messaging and other powerful influences, we take that pill, we date that person, we eat or drink those things that make us feel good in the moment. Remember, playing the short game is seductive. When you struggled with weight your whole life, when your grandparents died young, when you couldn't play with your kids due to back pain, all you think about is making it to the end of the day, making it to the weekend, or living an av average life of average length. Hoping we've saved enough for our retirement, hoping we don't end up in a home not knowing our names or recognizing our family members. Is it a surprise that that, that is how most people think and live? Yeah. Now back to our story for a minute. With the weight loss, the pain reduction, the abundance of energy and vitality, he now knew there was more to life to experience and enjoy. He has a new outlook on life, and his goal is to be a fully functioning, highly effective centenarian and beyond. That's right, he's planning to live healthy to over 100 years old. He's planning to see his great grandkids. He's planning to be above average. He is planning to be exceptional. He has chosen not to follow the masses, but to play the long game. He thinks about daily actions and decisions with the goal of living to be over 100. With the knowledge of what it took to heal him and to make a positive change in himself, he knew he could help others do the same for their own issues. While everyone is unique, he learned that inflammation in its many forms is a root cause of so many health issues. Health is an area where most people are stuck playing the short game. He recognized that you may not see it in yourself, but there is an exceptional person inside each of us. And he helps people achieve their exceptional results to find their true north, their why, their, their purpose, their reason to get up every day and play that long game. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, uh, I, hope I get to ask, uh, get asked again to participate at a future uh, event. Again, my gratitude to Danique for organizing this event. Uh, my gratitude for the other speakers uh, for sharing uh, as well.